Hi, I'm Dr. John Arlette. We're going to talk about how to look at the mandible. Basically, we're going to go from the angle of the jaw to the tip of the chin and look at the structures that are there and what features are going to be important for you as an injector to understand what's present, how to inject, and some tips on how to get the best out of knowing what's underneath the surface rather than simply looking at the skin and assuming that you know what's underneath. So when I look at the mandible, I divide it into three because the entire line of the mandible is a bit of a challenge because it's a long distance. So we're gonna divide it up into three areas. We're gonna talk about the proximal third, which is from the angle of the jaw to the end of the masseter. Well then from the end of the masseter, we'll then go to the labial mental crease where we'll be really looking at the vascular structures, the facial vein and the facial artery. We'll also look to see the platysmus. And then from the uh, labial mental uh, crease to the tip of the chin, we're gonna look at the incorporation of uh, four really important muscles. We'll look for the platysma. We'll look at the depressor angli oris. We'll look at the depressor labii inferioris, and we'll look for the mentalis. So now we're going to move over and start looking at this in combination with the ultrasound. So first of all, we're at 1.5 centimeters and I'm just gonna say increase depth. And so we'll go to 2.5 centimeters for working and the posterior aspect of the jaw. What I'm gonna look for is at the bottom, I wanna get the mandible as a really clear white line. And we're gonna put freeze. So in this, what you can see, is you can see the mandible at the bottom and posteriorly, you see this hazy, hyperechoic, opaque, it almost looks like a little cloud floating in the middle aspect of the, of the image. And this is the parotid gland. And this is something that we need to be very aware of because there's an, an increased incidence of injection into the parotid gland, which responds by tremendous inflammation, swelling, redness, uh, abscess formation. So knowing where it is is very important. Freeze. So now we'll scan so we can look for the parotid, so we're going low on the mandible. We can see how the tail of the parotid is draped over the posterior aspect of the masseter, and the masseter is just coming into position here. But let's go back and just talk a little bit more about the parotid, because I'm just going to very slowly scan upwards, and you'll see the parotid continues in place. Now it ends, it really is sort of draped at the inferior border of the zygoma much like you see the masseter now coming into view as we scan inferiorly. So when we're, we're looking at these two, there's a tremendous interplay. I'll just have you clench your teeth for me. Relax. So I just move forward, clench. So you can see that little bulge of the masseter and you can see how that pulls the, the parotid forward a bit, relax. We see the uh, parotid fascia, which is very thick. And you see how it incorporates into the fascia overlying the masseter, which we'll look at in a little bit more depth in a minute. Now let's move forward onto the masseter. So I'm doing this, I'm, you can see I've got the device held in the axial or horizontal plane. I can move anterior or posterior. So we're gonna move up to the masseter and in here you can see these hyperchoic, and I'll just have you clench your teeth and relax. You can see how they bunch up and you see how those hyperechoic lines, which are really the aponeuroses within the masseter. Basically, these are tendons that run up and down the masseter. It's a really strong muscle. And so if you just clench, you can see how they change position, relax, how they change in their, their dynamic interaction as the muscle moves. So it's important to have an idea of how they do move when you're looking at it so that it's not really all that foreign. So here's the anterior part of the masseter. We're just gonna go back again to the posterior aspect. During all of this, you can see I'm tilting the device, trying to maintaining that nice sharp image at the base. So again, we're just keeping that mandible very sharp. So masseter, see the fascia over the masseter. You see the aponeuroses within the masseter. And then we come back to look at the parotid again. So that's our proximal third of the mandible. We're gonna move forward to the mid third of the mandible. 
and it really goes from the anterior edge of the masseter down to where we're starting to see here we have the a bit of the platysma, the DAO and the DLI, basically where the mandibular ligament would be because these sort of fuse together on the mandible to create that. And again, we're making a really good clear structure. So here you can tilt your device, you can increase gain, decrease gain, in order to just get a better clarity of what's happening here. And then you can go freeze, and you can see this little circular anechoic um, area, little hollow, which is the facial vein. Freeze, and we're gonna go color mode. And here we see, first of all, the facial vein, which you can clear by pressing, but the facial artery, which is here, doesn't clear when you press on it. So that's a really good way to differentiate those. And so what I want to show you now is the rhizorius and I think some of the buccinator muscle right here in the mouth. And so you can see how it comes off. It fuses with the end of the masseter, rides forward, and inserts into the modiolus. We're moving on to the distal third of the mandible and we're now starting to come into the mimetic muscles. And here, freeze. We have really three together. We see what I believe is the platysma, the depressor angularioris, and the labii inferioris. And we can continue to see some small vessels as we move across the chin. So here's the labiomental artery. As it starts, and this actually is now coursing up as the inferior labial artery towards the lip. So a good place to look for this is right between the DAO, DLI, uh, as we can see right here. Color mode. And we move further across. So here we see the tip of the chin. And on either side you see a um, relatively anechoic areas, circular oval areas, which are the mentalis muscle as it arises from the mandible and raises up and inserts into the mental crease. And so there you have the mentalis muscle. You know where you can inject this muscle. Similarly, when you're injecting into the DAO, you'll be able to inject it more selectively to avoid the issue of inadvertently injecting the DLI and producing that little bit of a drop in the chin.